All right, here we go, everyone. Another awesome episode of the All Around Adventure podcast, and I'm very excited to welcome through hiker Bricks to the podcast uh, this evening. So, Bricks, what's going on? Thanks so much for taking time for joining me today, and welcome to the show. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I've been looking forward to uh, getting you uh, on the podcast. You know, you and I, we've kind of been connected uh, through social media uh, just recently, but I have been following you for a while. It's always kind of cool seeing a fellow Michigander, you know, especially kind of getting um, along the trails and retracing some of my steps, you know, because I know you've spent time on um, the North Country Trail and I've done all of the Michigan section um, of that. So it's kind of cool to see you post a picture and I'm like, I've been there before. (laughs) No, and that's why I was so excited because I had followed on the North Country Trail Facebook page. I had followed your like whole hike of uh, Michigan. So it was like cool when I saw you on Instagram, I was like, oh my God, I know that guy from somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that's one thing I've actually really come to like uh, about just like trail communities like in general is that we're spread out pretty good because you know the trail covers so much distance but yet and i guess maybe this is just um a nice little perk about modern technology and social media is that you know we're we're all pretty well interconnected you know because we got this common thing drawing us together and that's the trail and just being out on the trail oh yeah it's funny how like big the community is but also how small it is like i feel like a lot of people know a lot of the same people but it's cool because we all have that one thing in common so Yeah. And then also uh, just we were kind of talking about this just before we uh, hit record here is that, yeah, we tend to know a lot of different hikers based on our trail names. Of course, you know, uh, your trail name is Bricks. um, I'm Wolverine. And then I've mentioned I had some previous through hikers uh, on the podcast before I had Soda and I had Magpie and Constantine and you knew them like right away, too. So, again, just kind of just goes to show the small world of just through hiking. Yeah, because you can say soda, and I know exactly what you're talking about, and it's not a beverage, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, well, of course, you know, most of the country will say soda, but us Michiganders will just say pop. It's pop. Yeah, it's not soda. It's pop, and that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's always so so fun whenever I go to, like, other places in the country. Like, uh, I, I told you I just moved to Texas recently. They just call, like, a lot of uh, the Texans, they just say Coke for, like, everything. And I then- mean, that's weird. Yeah. And then like here in Florida, where I am right now, um, as we're recording, you know, everyone here just says soda for, for like everything. So <laughs> they're wrong. It's pop, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Pop. I mean, yeah, you know, just, it's the, it's the shortest word, single syllable. So let's just roll with it, you know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I want to go ahead and kind of dive a little bit more uh, into your story, Bricks. And, you know, you've, been out on many different trails and you got some uh, big endeavors that you're getting ready to tackle here, which we'll get into uh, in this episode. But, you know, I just want to go back to the beginning here and just kind of ask you, you know, just, you know, how did you uh, get your start as a hiker and what sort of inspired you to kind of get out on the trails uh, originally? Well, honestly, like I knew that I always liked spending time in nature, right? And I knew that I liked like taking walks through the woods. I didn't know necessarily to call it hiking, but, uh, I like had like a big, after my first back surgery, I had this like epiphany that I wanted to be more active because like you don't realize how much you use your body until it's taken away from you. So while I was like laid up in bed for a couple months, I was like, God, like I really like need to take advantage of being like a healthy person. Like, and I hate going to the gym. I mean, I still will, but I hate going to the gym. So I was like, what's a good way to exercise, but not have it be like a dreadful horrible thing. And that's when I got into hiking. I just started with like local trails. And then that led me to want to explore like, oh, like I saw this thing online. This looks really cool. That'd be really cool to go see. And like, it just came to be like, I was just pushing myself further. Like, oh, this was two miles. Now I can do four miles. Now I can do 10 miles. Like, and it was all just about like being an active person while like also hating like running a marathon. (laughs) Yeah, those low impact cardio uh, based uh, activities uh, for sure. Well, it, it's just, and of course, really, if you think about it, going out and walking in the woods is just, that's really just getting back to the basics. I mean, it's just, you know, I told you before we started recording here that I'm an archaeologist uh, by day and, you know, just kind of looking at our ancient ancestors, you know, that was everyday life, just getting out and walking very far. So it's just, uh, you know, for some, I, I would say they would say that, you know, getting down in the trails it exerts a lot of effort, but I just feel like that's, we're just getting back to the basics, just going out and being in nature. 
Absolutely. Like it's, and it's also just extremely therapeutic. Like sure. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I don't like break a sweat and stuff, but like being out there with like no cares in the world, very therapeutic. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then just, I mean, we'll, we'll have our phones on us for like emergency purposes, but I've gotten to the point now where it's just like, yeah, I'll, um, just put my phone on like airplane mode and just, you know, maybe use it as a camera if that, because it's just, um, yeah, it's just, you know, in this day and age, it's just like everything is so fast paced and, you know, we're just bombarded with so much stimuli that, yeah, just to kind of get out in nature and just let her play a song for you with just, you just listen to all the sounds in the distance. It's, uh, you just come back feeling a lot better. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's good to run out of service. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's that's happened to both of us out on the trail. Um, and it's going to probably happen, you know, yet again. So uh, we'll just embrace those moments when they come. Eh? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> All right. So um, let's kind of just go through some of your um, early hiking memories. Um, you know, like I said, you're, you're a fellow Michigander. So maybe we'll kind of just like start there first. So, yeah, just uh, what are some of uh, your early uh, trail experiences that you remember? So, like, I started, the closest state park to me, um, which I am in, like, southeast Michigan, is uh, Mayberry State Park. So that's where I have done, like, I mean, I still go there a couple times a week just to do the same trails that I've always done. Um, but it wasn't until I got, like, hiking into the UP that really made me appreciate Michigan. Not to say the Lower Peninsula is bad, but the Upper Peninsula really, like, I mean, the trails up there are absolutely insane. It, it doesn't make you think of the lower peninsula at all so when i think of like hiking in michigan along the north country trail is absolutely gorgeous I, anywhere near like marquette area the porcupine mountains uh Tequamanin falls uh we did a section of the north country trail from Tequamanin to the two-hearted river a couple years ago and i think that is still like my favorite section of the north country trail probably favorite section to hike in michigan just because of how uncrowded it was and how beautiful it was the entire time we were hiking. <laughs> yeah, I do remember uh, that stretch of of trail as well. Yeah, the Two-Hearted River was just amazing uh to to see yeah. and get along it. So, but you know, actually I I've, I've told this story to other hikers too and I don't know if you've shared the similar sentiment, but like I I'm always a little bit wary getting uh so close to Lake Superior because um that trail or that that trail uh that lake scares the hell out of me because <laughs> she is just a powerful powerful force of nature it's just uh you know um and then it, it's kind of funny when i tell other people who live in other states about uh lake superior and how we call her the lake that never gives up her dead and <laughs> and then tell her like why that is um you know through science and all that stuff but but then it's just like the forecast will call for like a zero percent chance of rain and then suddenly here comes this wall of rain coming off the lake and i'm just like girl what are you doing <laughs> you know? no it's insane even like the pictured rocks the rocks portion of the north country trail we were on there last summer and we had this one day it was going to be like 60 degrees and we we're like sweet it's going to be nice it's going to be good like let's go and the waves that were coming off of Lake Superior. I mean, like, it, it just, like, when you're walking that close to a lake that is that powerful, it is so insane. It, like, makes you feel so small because these waves were just, like, I mean, they had to have been close to 10 feet high. And it's just, like, insane that a nice, perfect 60-degree day was also creating those, like, ash astronomical waves. It was insane to witness, like, and feel the breeze from that, too. It's, like, insane. <laughs> um do you recall like uh any uh like scary stories like walking along there from like locals like did any locals tell you like scary stories about the lake at all no i don't think so i just like but people who live in the up are kind of crazy in like a good way because i feel like i've been up there in some of like some very cold days and i'll see like locals out in like knee deep water in Lake Superior, like crossing like little like river, like whatever banks. And they're just, they're, they're like immune to it. I think that people who live up there just are like, oh yeah, it's Lake Superior. She's 50 degrees at most all year round and they don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I can certainly agree with you there. Well, I think it takes a special kind of someone just to actually, well, especially how tough and brutal winters are up there too, you know, just for them to say, Oh, yeah, you know, it's a good idea for me to just settle up here and, you know, plant my roots here where, you know, it'll snow for like so many months, like out of the year where I, I feel like the the joke um, up in the Upper Peninsula is you're either enduring winter or you're preparing for it, where it's just like, I mean, you know, he, like 
in the in the lower peninsula, you know, I may work out by like hitting a, a tire with a sledgehammer, but up them, they're just like, why are you doing that? And not like, you know, swinging an axe, axe and chopping wood, you know? Yep. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, because they've gotten snow in August before. So that's a very short, uh, short summertime they have. <laughs> yeah. And um, and I definitely felt that when I was uh, doing my through hike, because uh, I, I started um, on the North Country Trail on the Wisconsin, Michigan state line and, and headed east. And it, w- it was in uh, late August. And uh, yeah, it's just the temperature did drop pretty quick. I, I felt like we kind of sort of skipped fall, like, you know, up there. And then um, I crossed the bridge just like around like October. And um, right after Halloween, it snowed on me. And, and I actually I blame it all on those that were raving about Christmas as soon as Halloween was over, you know, with posting all of those memes about like, OK, now we can toss the jack-o'-lanterns and put up the stockings. I'm like, no, no, I, it's no, it's too, it's too soon. About yeah, if they wouldn't have forgot about Thanksgiving, we would have been fine because, yeah, it's everybody jumps right from Halloween to Christmas every year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I want to zoom in on pictured rocks here for just a second, because I feel like pictured rocks is like the epitome of trail hiking in the Upper Peninsula, at least uh, in in my opinion. And, you know, of course, not to take away from some of the other amazing spots, too, like, uh, yes, going along the mouth of the Two-Hearted River and the Porcupine Mountains are also amazing places. But I feel like, especially now with the crowds that the Upper Peninsula draws, it's normally people wanting to go and get out on pictured rocks. So just um, zooming in on here for a second. Um you know, just tell us a little bit bit about your time there and just um, like what time of the year, like, uh, did you go, did you have difficulty like getting places to camp or what did that look like? Um, So I, most of the time I'm very bad at planning. So it's not a good idea to take ideas from me because we did plan, (laughs) uh, I think it was June 16th we started. Um, which could be good some years, but for the most part, terrible time to go. The black flies were absolutely ruthless. Like I'm talking, we could not sit still for five seconds. Like it was absolutely horrible. Like we were getting eaten alive by them, by mosquitoes. Uh, we still had a great time, but it really like the weather, like for that time of year works out great because you're going to have like 50 to 70 degree, degree weather, which is great for camping in and whatnot. But yeah, the bugs, not a very, very good time. <laughs> Getting permits was pretty easy. We got them, I think, in uh, like f- March. So I would suggest getting like a couple months out. But even then, I, I kind of question how um, the permit system kind of runs because we were at a lot of campsites that said they were full and there was only a few other people and like a lot of campsites that were still open. So I wonder how like hmm. the cancellation works for that because I feel like it wasn't as loaded as we thought it was going to be. Gotcha. Yeah, that 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 is interesting. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now with um uh, pictured rocks. Is that yeah? And unfortunately, if anyone does want to camp there, they probably need to plan it out well in advance. Um, I remember the first time I hiked pictured rocks was about a decade ago, and um, back then it was just you show up to one of the visitor centers, you tell a ranger, okay, I want to camp here, here, and here, and they put it all on one permit for you that you just kind of like you know, twist on and tie onto your, your, your uh, backpack and, you know, put on the outside of your tent when you get to your campsite. But now it's like, it's no longer a well-kept secret anymore. The, um, that's, you know, the pros and cons to that, I'd say, but, um, but yeah, everyone knows about the upper peninsula yeah. now, just how beautiful it is. Yeah. And of course I agree with you. Pictured rocks is definitely like the most beautiful part of that. I mean, where are you going to like turquoise waters along with like that rock but it is unfortunate that it, i mean like I, I unfortunate it's a bad word because the more people that love the outdoors appreciate the outdoors and want to you know do better for the outdoors but yeah it is it, it with the porcupine mountains they didn't used to ha- it used to be like you could backcountry camp wherever and now they have designated sites so it's like the good with the bad you know <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll, I'll say. And uh, and also, it was the same thing in Taquanamon Falls, uh, too. Like, I went through uh, uh, Taquanamon Falls um, on a Tuesday, and there were actually still buses, uh, like, rolling into the parking lot, letting people off. I'm like, it's a Tuesday afternoon. It's just, <laughs> are, is really <laughs> this busy? And, um, and, of course, like, 
uh, what was what was the most frustrating part for me is because like I was just hangry, you know, from all that walking, and um, there was like a line at the food truck, and I, you know, just really wanted food. So that 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 was just the only gripe I had. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we had a similar experience because we went there. It literally had a sign on the door that that brewery that all of the kitchen staff had COVID, so there was no food <laughs> while we were there. When we oh came wow! Yeah. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> We were left hangry as well. <laughs> yes, uh, that that's oh, that's 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 a tough break. Yeah, yeah. hanger that that stuff it follows you very harshly on the trail for sure, sure <laughs> for sure. So, all right, so um, now just kind of like looking back on some of your hiking experiences, and this is definitely going to be a loaded question because again, it's just like as through hikers, we cover so much ground and we see so many amazing things. But I mean. If you can just recall a couple of highlights, you know, that you would stand out in your mind. Obviously, we kind of discussed pictured rocks as one of them. But, of course, you've been on other trails, uh, too. Um, so, I guess, what kind of, like, comes to mind? And, I guess, like, um, what are some places, I guess, you would kind of recommend that, you know, stand out in your memory? Um, honestly, I've done a lot of hiking out west. And I do. I love mountains. Like, I love, don't get me wrong, Michigan is still one of my favorite places ever. Um, I love the hiking here. But I do love mountains, which we lack here in Michigan. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, Glacier National Park is still one of my favorite places ever to hike. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is it, it like has all of the features that like a California mountain range would have, but it's at lower elevation than that. I think like the top is like 7,000 feet or something like that. Like it's not very high. And as someone prone to altitude sickness, that is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they just have like a very vast terrain. They have um, I mean, it's becoming more popular now, but it was one of the more like less traveled national parks. Now it's, I think, one of the highest traveled, but uh, just like the accessibility to like, they have multiple mountains that are easy to reach, like within three mile hikes, which is awesome because most of the time, like if you're in Colorado or something, you're doing like a 14 mile day hike. Um, so that is my absolute favorite place to go. <laughs> uh, but uh, like a couple summers ago, I did the Tahoe Rim Trail, which is out in California, Nevada. And that to me is some of the best hiking that I've ever done. It was 171 miles, uh, but it like the trail was so maintained in a way that I've never seen before. Like in Michigan, we get a lot of overgrown weeds and like things on the trail which is fine but I feel like the like because of who keeps up with that trail I mean we didn't hit a like a down tree at all throughout all 171 miles of the trail it was beautiful it was following a beautiful like turquoise lake the entire time it was absolutely gorgeous <laughs> so so Tahoe Ram um is it exactly how it sounds where you're just like kind of just going around the entire lake yeah. And what's funny is that it's actually a very dry trail. So the entire time you're following the lake, but you're never actually close to the lake. You're kind of like above it a little bit. So like we had like, like three day water carries because of just the way that rivers and streams lined up. But uh, yeah, but you get to view at least the turquoise lake the entire time. <laughs> 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 okay, so so unfortunately, no popping down for a quick dip. Um, yeah, uh, no, we never even touched the actual lake. So, <laughs> gotcha. Okay, still sounds uh, pretty cool though. And yes, the Tahoe area is uh, really nice. It's it's been a couple years since I've been out that way. Um, you know, I did uh, spend some time on the California side before, so and it is pretty incredible. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I like that you bring up a uh, glacier and I appreciate that because it's definitely, um, it's on my list and I, it feels like it's one of those, uh, national, uh, Western national parks that kind of sort of gets overlooked and overshadowed by other parks like Yellowstone, Yosemite and Zion. Um, and it seems like, uh, you know, for a while, it's just, it seems like a lot of people had glossed over it, you know, my, myself included, admittedly, but um, from what you're describing, though, and from, from what I've heard from others as well, it's, it's just got to be an incredible place to visit. Oh, yeah. And I think the biggest problem isn't even like that people don't think it's pretty. It's just extremely hard to access. Mm. Like the closest airport, I want to say, is four hours away. And then, so we did the drive, which from Michigan, I think was like 26 hours. So, I mean, you got to either be willing to pay an expensive airfare plus get a rental car or make a 26 hour drive, depending on where you live. And that's kind of, there's a lot of nothingness in between there too. So you got to 
kind of choose your battle there. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So, so logistically challenging is the main thing. Yeah. So gotcha. Okay. All right. And well, you know that, and that's another thing I appreciate too, just something to take in consideration. I mean, if like, you know, it's a, it's an investment like uh nonetheless, but obviously from what you're describing an investment that really pays off in the end though. Very worth it. Very worth it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, right on. All right. So that's uh, some, uh, some of the highlights from your time on the trail. But unfortunately, you know, being out on the trail, you know, as we were talking about with challenges with logistics, I mean, challenges and misadventures, that's just kind of part of the game. It's its its not a matter of if they happen, it's when they happen. So um, so maybe if I could ask you to just kind of share, because I think these always make for fun stories, uh, you know, maybe not funny in the moment when they're happening, but in hindsight, they kind of are. Um, what are some of your misadventures from the trail, albeit not catastrophic ones, <laughs> if you will? So I've had a lot. I've had a lot. <laughs> um, one that immediately comes to mind is uh, this past summer, I was on the Superior Hiking Trail in Minnesota. And uh, I was walking, like we had, I think, four resupplies over that trail, um, which meant we were carrying like four to six days of food each time, which is a lot. But um, we got into this one town where I had mailed a resupply box to the post office. And uh, I'm an idiot and I didn't think twice about this, but I was literally limping into town with blisters like that were the size of like a quarter on my pinky toes. I don't even know how that's possible, but we finally get to the post office and I'm hungry because I didn't pack enough food because I was waiting on my resupply box. And when I get there to pick up my resupply box, the woman had told me that she didn't have one for me. And I was like, oh, like okay, I sent it here. And she was like, well, who'd you send it with? And I said, uh, you know, UPS. And she was like, well, we don't accept UPS packages here. And I did not look into that prior to getting, like sending the box, whatever. So my resupply box is lost somewhere in the mail. And uh, we're in this town, it's called Two Harbors. And uh, they didn't have a grocery store. It was just a gas station. Like it was a gas station, a bar, and the post office is basically what this whole town was. And so I had to go across the street to the gas station and resupply, like a whole like six day resupply off of gas station food. And so luckily they had like ramen and uh, like tuna and like a couple different bars and stuff. So I was able to make it work. Plus, like, so some of the good sides of the trail was that the actual, the gas station attendant, the woman that was working, she had seen me in, like, this distraught state, and she was like, is everything okay? And I was like, like, through tears, I was like, yeah, everything's fine, like, nothing's wrong, like, and she, I ended up explaining everything to her, and she actually gave me a ride to the city over, so that way I could actually resupply at a grocery store, <laughs> so, like, it was, it ended up being a good day, but it started out really poorly, because I just, I was not having it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and again, that's like just um, the trail magic of just like the people in the community that we're talking about. Um, so um, <laughs> I, I have I have a similar story uh, kind of going along with that. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if you've been on the North Country Trail as far out as like where Wisconsin, uh, where Michigan meets Wisconsin. But like the first 30 miles or so, like going into Michigan, it's all roadwalk. And yeah. um, so like after 16 miles of hiking on my first day. Um, the challenge became, okay, where am I going to pitch my tent now? Because it's just like, this is all private property. There's no like place for me to just bump off the road and pitch my tent. So I just took a gamble and I walked, um, uh, to, um, a random house. And I just remember I was going up this hill and I'm like, okay, the next house I see, I'm just going to go over there and just ask, you know, and, um, the, the people there were just absolutely amazing. Not only did they allow me to stay, but they also had um this big guest house that they let me use uh, oh, too. Wow. Yeah, it was um it, it was like it was like one of those guest house where it was just it was like a big open space, but they had like a loft that kind of went upstairs. Like it was it was huge. It was a whole house, you know. And um, so my very first night of uh, this uh, through hike. I got a bed to sleep in. I was able to take a shower. I was able to wash my clothes. I had access to like, you know, a faucet. So I'm just hydrating like crazy. And then there was a nice carpeted floor for me to stretch out on and everything. And they made me dinner. They made me breakfast the next morning before I stepped off. Just the works. I, I and 
again, it's just the trail magic and the people along that we meet along the way. They're just incredible, you know? That's, they always say, like, the trail provides. And that I feel like, seriously, that has happened to me so many times where I'm like, oh, my God, this is the worst thing. How am I supposed to get out of this? And then there's somebody that comes along and is like, oh, don't worry about it. I got gotcha. you. And, like, all of a sudden, everything, like, all my worries disappear. <laughs> like, yeah. And, 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 like, that trend continued, like, the entire way. It was just amazing how, like you know, complete strangers are just ready to move mountains to like, you know, help me succeed in this. And uh, I think because like they, especially anyone that's close to the trail, they know that what we're doing is so dang hard and um, trying to go that far. And, um, you know, then we run into like, you know, these mishaps and stuff like that, you know, not, not only can it make it our experience very uncomfortable, but sometimes they could make it kind of dangerous. Cause it's like, I mean, like with you, you know, you probably were, it was just jam packed your resupply boxes, just chock full of calories. Cause we're burning so many calories out on the trail. And so it's just like, yeah, if you can't, don't have the means to replenish that, you know, out on the trail, then you're setting yourself up for a world of hurt, you know? <laughs> yeah. exactly. And that was the thing is that like, I had sent like, you know, a bunch of electrolyte packets to, to in my resupply box. And that was the one thing that the gas station didn't have. They had nothing like no Gatorade packets, no nothing just. And that was like the one thing that I was really worried about because I was like, Oh, it's like a hundred degrees. I don't want to get like dehydrated. And that was when the gas station attendant was like, no problem. I'll put you in my car right now and we'll go. And I was like, that's incredible. Like, like you have no reason to do that for me. Right. Like I'm a stranger. You have no attachment to me and she also like she refused money she was like she was like i will not take a single dollar from you and i was like that is incredible because why did you do this you know and it was yeah. just a fine soul that's all <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh that, that that's amazing so right on all right well so you actually have some big hikes in the works here well a big hike uh, in the works <laughs> here and um you know I think it's probably just like what, like next week, um, as we're recording here, that you're actually about to step off and you're heading um uh, out west. So uh, can you kind of fill us in on uh, what you got coming up? Yeah. So a week from today, I will be starting the Pacific Crest Trail, which I'm sure everybody knows what that is. But in case you don't, it's a 2,650 mile trail from Mexico to Canada, going through California, Oregon, and Washington. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been planning it for like five years, so I'm pretty excited despite the current, uh, <laughs> obstacles that are, uh, in the way of that trail, but I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> wow. Okay. So like, um, is this going to be like the first of the triple crown? Is, is that something that you have your mind set on or you, or is it just this trail specifically that you just kind of been, you know, eyeing for a while? So what's funny is that like I actually when I first heard about the PCT I thought that anybody who would try to do that was crazy like I was like that's so long and that's so ridiculous why would anybody try to do that and then it kept like eating away at me right like I kept thinking about it all the time and I was like god I should really try that like I should really just like like that would be so cool to say that you did that and uh so since then, like now I'm kind of thinking like, oh, the Appalachian Trail is pretty cool. Oh, actually the Continental Divide Trail seems pretty sweet too. So it's like, now I'm like wondering like if I, like, I think it'll go, it'll make or break, like this trail will make or break it. Like if I like really enjoy myself this time, I could see myself attempting a triple crown. But at the end of this, if I'm like, dude, that was way too much. I could see myself absolutely backing out too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, now I I, th I think this is probably what's going to happen. Yet yeah, you're going to have days like I, like we were talking about misadventures. They're bound to happen. Like you're going to have days where you're going to say, "Oh heck no, I, I'm never doing something like this again." You know, heck no. But once you're once you're done and you feel that feeling of elation. And then, you know, you come back home and then you're actually going to start having like trail withdrawals. Like I felt them. Um, every hiker who's covered long distances have felt them too, where it's just, you're going to be missing adventure, even though, yeah, you say out on the trail that you're never going to do something like this again. You, you feel it though afterwards. It's so weird how type two fun works because on the Superior Hiking Trail this past summer, uh, I had thought like, I was like, oh my God, I'm not hiking the, the Pacific Cross Trail next year. Like I was like, that's crazy. I like, I'm never going to do like something like this ever again. And then like, as soon as you get home, it's like, oh my God, I miss that. And it's, I, I just wonder how our brains are wired to think that way because why, <laughs> like, I know how hard it is. I know like that it's like half fun, half misery. Like, why do I, like, why do I crave that so much? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, it, it is. It's um, uh, it's almost like an addiction, isn't it? Because, well, especially because you're going for like, you know, something bigger, something grander, you know, because I mean, well, there, 
and I, I there's not really much of a comparison between the su- superior um uh, hiking trail and the pct because like the superior hiking trail we're talking a few hundred miles and then now you're pushing a couple thousand so it's just a vast you know step up from what we just from what you did you know this past summer <laughs> so um i guess what what's kind of like going through your mind i guess like how are you sort of preparing yourself mentally just kind of knowing that like Yes, you've done long distances in the past, but this is a whole new level that you're about to take it to. Oh, yeah. Well, so first of all, again, with my poor planning skills, don't do the Superior Hiking Trail (laughs) in like the main summer months. Like that is like the biggest problem that we had were, were the mosquitoes. And so we like, I mean, we were covering ourselves with DEET bug spray and still, like, I at one point had counted on my legs 31 mosquito bites. And that was with, like, full bug spray. Like, I was wearing a head net, and I was still getting bit through the head net. Like, it was absolutely terrible. And that was the main reason of our miserableness, because it just, like, every time we thought the bugs were lightening up, it would, like, rain. And then we, the bugs would be 10 times as worse. Uh, and so, like, I feel like a lot of like my willpower getting through that trail was like, (laughs) I feel like it was a lot to just finish it, which is stupid. Like that should never be the reason that you like hike a trail, right? Like just to finish it means nothing. Like who does, who does that matter to? But like, I think it was just important for me at the time, like, listen, you can do hard things. Like you are capable of doing these hard things. And like, as long as you are like physically able to do it, you should still just try. Cause there was like a couple different points in which we could have gotten off trail. Like there, it would have been easy peasy to just like get a ride and head back and nobody, you know, would have known anything different, but I was just like trying to test myself. And that's kind of how I feel with like the Pacific Crest Trail where Like, I know it's going to be hard. Like, I know that not every day or maybe not even every week is going to be easy. And I, but like the the part of like, you can like mentally force yourself to do something like that. And as long as your body is capable of it. And I mean, also, I like hiking too. So like that that also helps. But I'm just excited to see like how far I can come in that way. But uh, yeah, just training wise, I mean... It's hard here in Michigan because we don't have mountains and obviously I will be regularly climbing mountains, <laughs> but I just know that the first two weeks of the trail, I'm going to take it as easy as possible. Like I am planning on doing like seven to 10 mile days for a little bit at least. Plus I'm waiting out the snow, so it, there's no real rush anyways. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just, well, really quick, I just want to touch on what you just brought up about the mosquitoes. Yeah, mosquitoes up north are like a special kind of crazy breed, let me tell you. Because um, when I was uh, going um, across uh, Michigan, uh, I, I ran into uh, Magpie and Constantine um, on the trail. They were going in the opposite direction from me. And one of the things that they were uh, warning me about, like, is, of course, you know you know how it is when you pass like um, a hiker going the opposite direction of you, you know, you just kind of swap intel as to what they're about to be up against. Like, you know, I'm told them, oh yeah, you don't have to ford this river because the water's low. And they're like, okay, when you get that way, you're going to just come across a couple miles where it's like mosquito like <laughs> infested and uh but it it starts and stops very abruptly like he described it that way like it starts and stops very abruptly and lo and behold it did but yeah <laughs> those mosquitoes up there they just like eat deep for breakfast like it doesn't matter like how much you spray yourself down they will through it or how bit how many layers you have on they'll just it's like you know like a needle just goes right through you <laughs> And that was the thing we were like, we couldn't even stop to like eat or anything because they just like swarmed you. And it just got to be like a point where you thought you were going insane because you'd hear this like little buzzing in your ear and you just wanted to like, you know, go inside somewhere. Like it was just like, so, I mean, like we knew it was going to be bad. Like we didn't, again, we didn't expect it to be good, but I think we were kind of hoping it'd be better than what we, what we saw on the internet. And it was not, it was not any better than that. (laughs) So yeah, I, I think that if you're going to do the Superior Hiking Trail, um, October is a great time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. Let them fizzle out a little bit, and then yeah, exactly. you can have it to yourself, and you can watch the leaves change too. So exactly. <laughs> there we go. Now, now we're thinking. 
All right. So um, as far as like your other preparations uh, from uh, the PCT, uh, I kind of want to talk about gear a little bit. You know, this is always this is always kind of a fun thing, you know, to talk about other hikers with because, you know, different hikers, you know, they have different styles. You got some that really kind of spring for the uh, the ultralight uh, stuff where they're carrying like six pounds like uh, on them and that's it. And just like very, very minimalist. And you got like some that will kind of go on the heavy side and kind of pack a little bit more creature comforts uh, and everything like that. So so what kind of style do you think you've kind of cultivated in yourself? And, you know, can you kind of take us through some of uh, the gear that you're going to be uh, taking out with you? Yeah. So I feel like I'm kind of a mix of both. I'm definitely not like an ultra, ultra light person, but because of my back problems, I have to be like as light as I possibly can. So I, I think my base weight is like 12 12. Nice. Maybe yeah. So it's not terrible. It um, but like again, then I talk to people who have a five pound base weight, and I'm like, I don't even know how that's possible. But <laughs> yeah. Um. So I care. My backpack is a uh, Waymark Gear Company. It's called the Through Pack. It's I think it's a 42 liter pack, which is a little bit on the small side. But I found that the smaller the pack is, the less that I'm willing to carry. <laughs> So, um, and then my, I use a sleeping quilt instead of a sleeping bag, which is an enlightenment, uh, equipment enigma. It's a 10 degree cause I, I'm a cold sleeper. So I bring that like pretty much year round just cause I'd rather have something to throw off of me than like need more. Um, I have a Thermarest Neo Air X Lite as my sleeping pad, but I also still usually bring, um, my Z light, which is like the like accordion style one, um, just to like have extra comfort. Plus, like I love to just throw that down during the day and lay on it if like if I'm t- exhausted at lunch. Uh, and yeah, my tent right now is the Gossamer Gear, the one as well. That's where I like really saved some like weight there because that is a non freestanding tent. So my tracking poles hold it up, so I don't have to carry like all the extra poles and whatnot. Gotcha. You know, I'm actually really curious to see like how that works. I've seen like, yeah, some other hikers uh, use, uh, yeah, just like the trekking pole uh, style uh, tents, you know, very, very, very um, simple, but effective too. I mean, obviously, if they can get it to last for like, you know, thousands of miles on the trail, then, you know, yeah, there's something to it. Oh, definitely. And I do think it works a little bit better because it's a single wall tent. So I feel like uh, it, works a little bit better like in out, out west conditions than it does like per se midwest or like east coast just because out west they don't get as much rain whereas like i've definitely gotten some rain drops on me like in the midwest i took it on the superior hiking trail and i did get wet occasionally but uh like i think it really works for at least west coast hiking okay uh cool right on all right so um One of the things I also kind of wanted to ask you, and I think, you know, even um, our audience probably might be curious to kind of like know this too, is just like, you know, how are you kind of sort of like priming yourself uh, financially speaking to do an endeavor like this? Because, you know, for you to uh, more or less disappear from the workforce for like, you know, months at a time to go do an endeavor like this, I mean, it's... uh, it, it involves like a lot of planning. You kind of got to set aside a pretty good nest egg, uh, especially if you plan to self-finance it. Um, and then of course, you know, we got like some through hikers in this day and age with like big, big like YouTube channels and, you know, they got sponsors and stuff like that. But, you know, a lot, but I'd say probably the majority of people who do this, it's all them, you know? So um, yeah. Can you kind of just maybe take us through that and just kind of how do you sort of like uh, set yourself up uh, in that way to get ready to do this? Yeah, so I've been planning uh, a PCT through hike for like five years. And so um, I'm a bartender. So full disclosure, it's not like I'm a millionaire. But um, I started like five years ago collecting my fives, ones and tens, which like always seems like a small amount, right? Like fives, ones and tens, like doesn't seem to be an incredible amount. But over five years, that can actually add up quite a bit. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. That on top of like tax return season, like I pretty much like every time, every month for the last two years, I've been trying to put away $200 a month, which I know isn't possible for everybody, but that like was like a life saver for like just because it's really hard to try to put away that amount at one time. And unfortunately, through hikes are pretty expensive. Like I think they account like the low side is like two dollars per mile i think is what they account it as but that's pretty much if you're not 
planning on staying in hotel rooms and not planning on like eating at every restaurant that you stop by. And I'm the complete opposite. I like, I can sleep in the dirt, but I also am bougie. Like I want to stay in the hotel room with a jacuzzi tub. I want to eat and drink at the bar down the street. Like I, I didn't want to say no to anything basically. Or like, I mean, even for like safety aspects, like if I have like a knee flare up or a back flare up and I have to stay in a town for three days, I don't want that to be like devastating to my finances, you know? So I think that that was part of the reason that I started saving so early, just because, you know, I just didn't want to, I didn't want money to be a problem for it. Like there are a lot of people who can do this on $2,000 and that's great. That's awesome. But I just knew I wasn't going to be one of those people. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I'm kind of sort of like, yeah, yeah, that way too, where it's just like, um, like I hear of like some hikers, like, they will just like go to the to the these like lengths where they say like oh yeah when I just get tired I just lean my back up against a tree and fall asleep and then I'll wake up in the morning and keep going I'm like what <laughs> what are you talking about but um but yeah I, I'm kind of like that same way too like the way I set it up to go across Michigan is like yeah I would hike for maybe about four or five days and then I you know wanted like a uh, a place to shower and a bed to sleep in take a zero day and to uh, do all that stuff I mean luckily I you know more often than not I had trail angels that you know kind of took me in during those times when I got to like certain places but you know there was a couple of times where yeah you know I just wanted to spring for like um, a hotel um, um, or a cabin or something like that and just um you know kind of get back to normal so to speak i guess you know <laughs> so it's like we're already like beating ourselves up we might as well like have at least one day per week that we can like relax and like actually like feel like a human being again for a minute <laughs> like <laughs> yeah and um and and kind of going back to your point where you said you kind of just set aside like you know these small amounts like you know just over time i mean you know it's just that that's actually you know a, a not surprising that you you would you know save up that much money to you know like I said be out on the trail for uh, this long because you know just look at like a single month where someone's spending like x amount of money like you know at a Starbucks every single day to get their coffee it's just that cost racks up pretty quickly actually when you do the math so um but yeah but if you were to just yeah set that aside to do some sort of savings plan for you know maybe like and of course in this case we're talking about hiking but maybe someone wants to do a different adventure maybe they want to go backpack around europe for you know a couple months it's uh the same concept with saving though it's just you kind of got to be deliberate and just do those small things over time and it really does add up for you yeah, no, it definitely is. Like, it's it's definitely self-discipline. Like, you have to really want it in order to do that. Because you could see that saving set aside in a couple months and be like, hey, like, I want this new pair of pants. Let me buy that pair of pants. And, like, you really have to be able to be like, no, because in two years, I'm going to use that money to do something really cool. And <laughs> Yeah, ab absolutely. So um, now I, I think like another thing that maybe our audience would be curious to know about is do you have like any safety concerns kind of going out on the hike? Because, um, you know, it's just, again, you're kind of like going to be out in the middle of nowhere. And if you do run into like an emergency, like you do get hurt and you're kind of out there or, you know, there's also potentially like dangerous animals um, out there um, uh, as well, too. So I guess, um, do you have any concerns? Um, I mean, I'm sure you do, but I guess like uh, it's just how you kind of sort of like, um, I guess, counteracting like uh, safety concerns that you may have uh, leading into this. Yeah, so I um, I carry a Garmin in reach, first of all, which I suggest to everybody who has one. It's pricey, and I understand that, but it is so, like, worth the peace of mind. So it's a satellite phone, so I can text from it. I can hit an SOS button, which will alert search and rescue, which is super important because that just, like, I don't ever want to hit that button, right? But it's, like, nice to be able to know that, like, if like shit hits the fan, I will be able to like hit that button and somebody at least somewhere will know that somebody's struggling. <laughs> um, and so like with this year, specifically with the PCT, they're having like a 400% uh, snow year, which mm -hmm. is like absolutely insane. It's like the highest snow year on record. <laughs> wow. So it's, yeah, it's, it's insane. Um, so it's going to be a hard one. I, but I also like my risk assessment is so like, like, I don't put myself in risky situations anymore. Like, if there comes a point of the trail where it's like, hey, like, there's 10 feet of snow, but people are going through, it's like a little bit sketchy, I'm going to be like, no, I'll, I'll like skip up and do something else and come back down when it's like a little bit less sketchy. Like, I 
don't want to put myself in any bad situation because I, I just I, I don't care about that anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like having the garment in reach, though, I think is like my biggest safety net, like on top of ma- making uh, calculated decisions, like having that like last option as hitting that button and having somebody like be alerted of my whatever condition I'm in, it has been, has been huge. <laughs> so even though it is like a pricey thing, it really is uh, a good safety net. <laughs> yeah. Well, like you said, peace of mind too, you know, yeah. just that you got that, you know, net in place, uh, you know, should, should you need it. So, you know, and, and as the saying goes, it's always better to have and not need the need and not have. So there exactly. you go. <laughs> like I've spent, like I bought the device and spent uh, a monthly uh, data plan and have never needed it, but it is great to, to have and I'd spend it all over again. So, <laughs> all right. Very, very cool. All right. So um, now one of the things I kind of want to ask you, and this uh, just kind of coincides with just what I like to ask all my guests uh, during the show is just some of the big takeaways and life lessons that we learned from uh, our experiences. And of course, like with you have already covering so much uh, ground, like out on the different trails that you've been on. Um, and then of course, like, you know, and I'd love to probably get you back on the show, like, you know, for the after action review, once you do make it to uh, the end of the, of the PCT notice, I say when you make it to the end, not <laughs> if you make it to the end, you know, cause I believe I like in you that. bricks. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah. So, um, so getting back to uh, what I was going to ask you is just, um, just looking back on, uh, all the uh, times you spent on the trail so far, what have been some of your big takeaways and life lessons that you've uh, implemented in your life along the way. And again, I know that's one of those, another loaded questions, but I'll, I'll just ask you again, what kind of comes to mind? So it's just something that I feel throughout a lot of life and it, it particularly applies to hiking because I know I've used it, but just like doing things that makes that make you uncomfortable, like not dangerous, but make you feel uncomfortable is probably the best way that you're going to learn and grow as not only as a person, but as an adventurer, like, I think that, like, putting yourself in situations that you're, like, oh, I don't know if I can do that, but, like, I really want to try to do that, like, just gaining the knowledge and doing it because you want to, but also being safe about it, like, I really think that that is the key to advancing, like, not just in the hiker world, but in the world as a whole, because that has helped me, like, there have been so many times, like, even just, wanting to go on solo trips and being like, I don't know if this is a good idea, but then doing it and being like, that was the best thing I've ever done. Like that, those are some of the best experiences and you're not going to get those if you're staying inside your comfort box. Yeah. And, um, and, and like you said, like that's applicable to just about so many other situations. Of course, yes, we're talking about hiking and getting out in nature here, but you know, for some people in their lives, it could be just like, go talking to that person that you want to ask out on a date, you know, but you're afraid of rejection, but you know, doing that or asking your boss for that promotion you think that you deserve, you know, it's just just go do it. Yeah. Like you're just, you're not going to get anywhere staying in the same place. And like the worst that can happen is you got to turn around or somebody says, no, you know, like that is, you know, you'll get over that. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Right on. All right. So um, where can we um, follow your journey? I mean, uh, you know, I'm, of course, you're going to be out in, in nature for a while. And as we've uh, talked about earlier, you know, cell reception, you know, could be um, a hit or miss. But I'm sure like, you know, once you make it into like, you know, some towns or if you stop for a zero day, you might be posting some stuff. But uh, but yeah, where can we um, uh, follow your journey? Yeah. So on Instagram, I am Bricks Hikes. Uh, I will also probably, I don't know how consistent I'll be, but on YouTube, I'm also Bricks Hikes. Uh, And I plan to post on both of those things, like keeping it updated as much as I can. All right. And um, I'll be getting uh, everything linked up uh, in the show notes for this episode. Um, Or if our viewers are watching um, our conversation on YouTube, it'll be, you know, in the description uh, below so they could uh, go ahead and uh, find it there. So um, what I have for you next is um, I also like my guests to um, issue a challenge uh, to uh, our listeners. And we kind of sort of already did that with um, uh, one of my previous questions here, but maybe I'll ask you to think of uh, something else because, um, you know, I always say that stories and information can only take um, our listeners so far. Action has to follow up to go out and do amazing things uh, in our lives. So with that, what challenge would you issue to our listeners today for them to go out there and start living a more adventurous life? Ooh, okay. I feel like this is going to be so cliche and it kind of fits along with like the uncomfortable thing, but it's like, do one thing that scares you. And that I feel like that is super cliche, but I feel like that has been one thing that has gotten me out of like so many like 
just bland situations. Like if you do one thing that kind of freaks you out, you're probably going to have a better experience and a better story to tell than like if you had just sat at home. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, um, well, for one, it's just like I, 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 when it comes to like fears, I always think like long term, like uh, especially like some of the stuff that I like, I, I felt in my own life that if I, if I hold myself back due to fear, you know, it's just typically it's it's always things that aren't gonna like you know be dangerous or like you know result in like uh, death, like uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like maybe I'll be somewhat embarrassed or somewhat discouraged in the moment. Like again, like asking someone on a date, you know, I'm f- afraid of rejection, but you know, it's just. You know, hopefully that person's not going to kill me for asking, <laughs> right? So, but uh, but yeah, I like I appreciate that. Yeah, so. like I said, I mean, I'm afraid of heights, but it's like, and that's not going to kill me, right? Like, just necessarily being up high is not going to kill you, but like doing something that pushes you there, where it's like, wow, this is scary, but also this is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. So, so does that mean that skydiving is in your future? What about bungee absolutely jumping? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Not. <laughs> Okay, so we ha- we have a threshold for that one. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Because I'm also terrified of planes, so I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, then hiking uh, clearly a good fit for you then. So exactly, I'll go to the top of a mountain, but don't get me on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Copy that. So, all righty. Um, so what I have for you next, Bricks, is my final three. These are three fun questions. At least I like to think that they're fun questions that all of my guests get asked at the end of the show. So of course you're going to ask these as well. And the first of these three questions is, what is your favorite place that you've been to so far? Oh, I, I think I have to say Glacier National Park. I really do. Like that park is really, that's what makes me want to hike the CDD is because you finish, oh, well, depending on when you, when you start, but you finish in Montana and that is absolutely a dream. It is gorgeous up there. Yeah. Nope. Okay. All right. And um, oh, well, well, speaking of which, by the way, um, when you when you do um uh, the PCT, are you going northbound or southbound? I'm going northbound. Northbound. Okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Well, th- of course, that, that that makes sense. As you said, you're waiting for like, you know, the snow to kind of fizzle out as you yeah. get further north. So, okay. It's gotcha. I'm to go southbound this year, but I'm not very smart as we've talked about. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, northbound it is then. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so what I have uh, for you next is uh, what is one thing on your bucket list that you have yet to do? Ooh, I want to go to Patagonia. Mm. Yeah, that would be absolutely, that seems like killer hiking. It's it's also, I've never been to that part of the world before. So I feel like just seeing that, the different landscapes, different animals, I feel like that would be really awesome. Nice. And yeah. and that that's definitely a first answer for this question. Uh, no one else has said Pat- Patagonia yet. Yay. So there you go. Um, yeah. And actually, I'm trying to think um, if someone said Glacier, like, like I've had guests say Montana is their, their favorite place, but I don't know if anyone zoomed in specifically on Glacier yet, maybe. I don't know, but it's yeah, really, it's the most beautiful part. It really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, yeah. I mean, right now, my my f- uh, favorite uh, park still is Isle Royal, um, uh, but yet- um, uh, well, I mean, for obvious reasons. I mean, you know, it's just it's an, it's amazing, and uh, plus that was definitely the most logistically challenging you know trip that I've ever done. So yeah, getting there, so very remote, very yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. But I don't know, you know, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens when I make it out west again and see some of the other parks that I haven't been to yet. So um, Gl- Glacier's on the list, that's for sure. So, all right. And now the third question, and uh, this is a two-parter uh, question. What is your favorite animal and have you seen this animal in the wild? Uh, so, yeah. So moose are my favorite animals and I have seen several moose in the wild. Luckily, I have uh, in Colorado, in Montana, in Alaska, tons of moose. That was It was funny because I went a very long p- part of my life without seeing one. And so it was always just like this thing of like, oh my God, I can't wait to see one. And like Michigan, the Upper Peninsula technically has them, but I don't know many people that have ever seen a moose actually in the wild. So it wasn't until I went to Colorado that I first saw a moose, but worth it. They're incredible creatures. They're way bigger than you think they're going to be. They are incredible. (laughs) Yes, yes. And uh, well, I hope you do get to see them in Michigan because I I did get to see them uh, when I threw hiked across the the Upper Peninsula. I saw one uh, just uh, east of Marquette. So um... see, that is like, that's where I've always gone looking for them because I Marquette is where I eventually want to live. But that is like where they say that it's like 
come in places to see them. But I swear every person from Marquette has never seen one. So you're a rarity. You are, you got to see one. <laughs> or, or maybe, well, well, like, well, when I was there, I took a quick break and I did a, um, uh, a side-by-side ride. Um, like they had like a, a side-by-side, like event, like a local club was just taking local veterans, like out on the trail. And, uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I'm a, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. And, uh, so, um, yeah, I, they, since I was, uh, hiking through that area at the time, they let me take part in this, uh, veteran, uh, side-by-side ride. And yeah, we stopped, uh, in the trail and, you know, big moose comes, uh, walking across like, you know, the trail in front of our vehicles. It was so cool. So that is so cool. That is like a very unique experience. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but unfortunately the big guy uh, got himself in the trees before I had a chance to whip out the camera. So, um, so I guess some people would say like, well, if you don't have a photo, it didn't happen, but it totally <laughs> happened. So, uh, yeah, they're sneaky little bastards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For being so big, they actually really are, you know, quite elusive. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So, um, well, bricks, uh, that's it. Uh, that's all the, the questions I have for you today. But, but before we uh, call it a day here, let's just recap uh, one more time where our listeners can go to uh, connect with you and where they could uh, follow along on your journey on the PCT. Oh, yeah. So I am Bricks Hikes on Instagram, which is B-R-I-X Hikes. Um, and same thing on YouTube, where I will be posting as often as I can. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. And like I said, I'll be... Uh, leaving everything uh, in the show notes uh, for this episode, all those links. So our listeners can go and find them there. And when this episode uh, does go released, you will actually be on the trail um, uh, already. So um, yeah, they can just go ahead and start following you and maybe you'll already have a couple of things posted. So yep, okay. everyone can go and uh, find them there. All right. Well, Bricks, I want to thank you very much for taking the time uh, for, for joining me today. And I know you, you're probably really busy getting yourself situated for this adventure, but, you know, I appreciate you you hopping on uh, with me. And, you know, it's always great to connect with uh, fellow hikers and especially, like I said, um, a fellow Michigander, too, that, you know, we've uh, got to trace some of each other's uh, steps along the way. So, um, yeah, it's just yeah, been great to connect with you. And thanks for sharing your stories and insights with myself and the listeners. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm sure that we will run into each other at some point on trail. So. Yeah. Well, like we were talking about, you know, it's a small world, you know, in the hiking community. So I'm sure we will. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Right on. Thank you, Bricks. Thank you.